anyway, our chemical sunscreens, this is where it gets tricky. I'm going to try to explain this without losing you. Here's part of the scam. It's actually a huge part of the scam. Not only do we have these inactive, so they're not under the heading of the active FDA approved. We have these inactive SPF boosters in many of our mineral sunscreens that we think are clean that we're using because we don't want chemical screen, but they are chemical and they are just one molecule away from being the actives that are approved. All right. So that part one is a bit of a scam. Number two, get this. And I, I shared this in the safe sunning episode I did years ago that I'll put in the show notes. And I've talked about this for years. I've been talking about this for 20 years, you guys. UVB, there's different rays out of the sun. UVB is what chemical sunscreens block mostly UVB and UVB is responsible for getting your melanocytes to activate, which is what tans your skin and protects your skin against UV damage. And UVB activates cholesterol on your skin and turns it into vitamin D. Okay. You following? So UVB, in my opinion, is very important. The sunscreen, the chemical sunscreens that have been popularized predominantly block UVB. Now let's talk about UVA. UVA are the rays that aid you that have been linked to melanoma, uh, that cause the photo aging and the actual damage to the DNA very strongly are these UVA rays. You get UVA in the morning and you get UVA in the later part of the day. We need UVA. We just don't need to be blasted with it constantly without the protection of our melanocytes being activated by UVB. Does that make sense? So UVB activates the melanocytes and it's much more complicated than this, but this is just the kindergarten version. UVB activates the melanocytes, which protect your skin from the UVA. So the UVA gives you the therapeutic benefits without the damage. The chemical sunscreens you and I have been convinced to wear for the last however many decades literally blocks UVA only for the most part. So you're getting blasted. You think you're spraying this stuff on or you're smearing it all over you or your children and you think you're protected. You're using a chemical sunscreen here. I'm not talking zinc. I'm not talking titanium dioxide. I'm talking straight up chemical sunscreens that are in most sunscreens that you're buying. The ones that smell like sunscreen. Those are blocking the UVB, which is blocking your vitamin D production, which is blocking the rays they're most concerned about. And you are basking in unmitigated UVA rays all day long. Okay. I talked about that in the other episode. So get that out of the way. This has not been improved upon in decades. Now there's a couple terms you probably have heard like full spectrum, broad spectrum. Um, you probably wonder how they get these SPF numbers on the bottle. How do they prove that they block, you know, 50 or 70 or whatever it is. This is the dance here, and this is where it all gets a little scammy. So I've made a spreadsheet. <laughs> I, I mean, I've been all over this. So first of all, let's see here. Okay, so first of all, let's get into labeling. Broad spectrum. This is a legal label. This is a, let's edit this. Okay, first of all, the term broad spectrum. This is a legal labeling term it is not complete protection. So if your bottle says broad spectrum protection, all it means is that the sunscreen provides protection against UVA and UVBs, but it does not guarantee full spectrum protection across the entire UVA spectrum. So we're not getting full protection across the UVA spectrum. So as I said, you are getting your UVB blocked and you are getting blasted with UVA rays all day long. The FDA, <clears throat> edit that, the FDA allows broad spectrum labeling if the product passes a low bar UVA UVB ratio test. Even partial UVA coverage, mostly UVA2, there's UVA2 and there's UVA1. Even partial UVA coverage, mostly UVA2, which is the less damaging, can qualify. So if you get a little bit of UVA2 coverage, you get your UVB rays covered, you've now got the ability to legally call your product broad spectrum. But the deeper, more aging and cancer linked rays and photo damaging rays, the UVA1, 
these are very often underprotected. You're very often not getting coverage for those. So this allows many chemical scunts, <clears throat> edit this. This allows many chemical sunscreens to legally call themselves broad spectrum while still leaving your skin very vulnerable to UVA one rays. Let's just sit with this a minute. You're slathering your face and your body in chemical sunscreen. I'm not a fan of the chemicals and what they're doing. I'm not a fan of their impact on our hormones. I'm not a fan of their impact um, to the fact that some of these actually oxidize in the sun. They're, you, they're vitamin A derivatives and they oxidize in the sun. I'm not a fan of that part. But you think you're doing yourself a favor because the dermatologist told you to put the two finger fulls, right? You're supposed to do a two full fingers of sunblock just for your face. So, I'm sorry, sunscreen just for your face, whether this is chemical or mechanical, whether you're using a mineral or a chemical, doesn't matter. You do the two finger fulls. That's a lot of product to be smearing on your face. And that is supposed to protect you. But because it says broad spectrum on the bottle, you're convinced, oh my gosh, it's SPF 70, I'm good, broad spectrum. No, you're probably getting blasted with UVA rays all day. And those UVA rays are photoaging, they're the cancer linked ones, they go deeper and they're more damaging. That is a huge scam in my opinion that I've been aware of for a long, long time that I've been trying to share with people, people do not wanna hear it. Okay, so now we get to full spectrum. Some of you have heard full spectrum. This is a marketing term, this is not a legal term. This is often very misleading. Full spectrum is not regulated. It's a marketing claim. It has no scientific or FDA approved standards. Bra uh, different brands often use it to imply total UV protection, but it's completely unverified. Some use full spectrum to include visible light and infrared, but those claims vary widely from product to product. And there is no test or threshold for what full spectrum means. So any brand can slap it on anything. So full spectrum is a marketing scam. Broad spectrum is a legally protected term, but it doesn't actually have to qualify to cut the UVA one rays. So true full spectrum UV protection is protection. So UVB is what burns you. That's what pinks up your skin and tans your skin. That's what activates your melanocytes. UVA two is the aging and DNA damage. And then UVA one is deep aging plus skin cancer risk. So those are the main rays that we're worried about. Now get this, this is where it gets really spicy. And this is where I was like, dude, mineral sunscreens are such a scam. If you have a mineral sunscreen, I want you to pause this right now. And I want you to go get it. I want you to turn it around and it'll tell you active right at the top. It'll say active. That's your active ingredients. If it says any of the chemical sunscreens, this does not apply. But if it's a true mineral sunscreen, especially if it's marketed as clean, and I'm going to go through some brands here in a second that I put on the spreadsheet. I've really dug into this. If it says zinc oxide and it's less than 18%, it's not protecting you against UVA1 either. The only thing in my research, and please tell me if I'm wrong, but the only thing that I have found scientifically that blocks UVA1, truly blocks UVA1 rays, is zinc oxide above an 18% threshold. So write that number down, 18%. If you're using a mineral sunscreen, titanium dioxide is irrelevant here. If you want to block UVA one rays, which are the deep rays, the photo aging rays, the rays we do not want, the ones linked to the scary cancers like melanoma, you need to use zinc oxide at 18% or higher. All right. So pause there, go check your bottle, see what you're using and see, does it have 18% or higher? If it does, it probably has a little bit of a white cast. And going back to what I was sharing about my family, my daughter and I always using mechanical barriers or you know, the zinc oxides really is that we call them the corpse bride sunscreens because they leave a white cast all over you, kind of a shiny white cast. And so, you know, they, man, they were not as elegant as they are now and they didn't disperse as well as they do now because zinc oxide is very difficult to get into something that doesn't look like a corpse bride outfit. So we would slather ourselves up on trips to Mexico in these like heavy zinc oxide, not like white, white, you know, not like the cool zinc we used to wear back in Southern California in the eighties, like that was blue or pink or whatever, not that, but you know, truly a sunscreen. Like I think Badger makes a good one. 
there's a couple of them out there um but it leaves like a white cast right and it's hard to get off so they've come a long way and i think the ones that we're using more cosmetically for the face is are, are much more elegant than they used to be but if it's not 18 percent or higher and it's boasting to be broad spectrum it's saying broad spectrum on the bottle you're not getting uva one coverage so if you're using a chemical sunscreen you're not getting uva one coverage if you're using a zinc oxide mineral sunscreen that's less than 18 percent, you are not getting uva one coverage add to that that several of these mineral sunscreen companies have added these uv boosters which are actually cousins of the chemical sunscreens but they're in the mineral sunscreens being touted as clean that is such a scam <laughs>